So our agenda for today, uh, I, I want to focus and start on SolidWorks Electrical. Some of you may be new to what SolidWorks Electrical can do, um, but we're really going to dive into automation techniques. We'll start basic, something that's covered in a lot of implementation. We'll build up into librarying uh, items that can be reused in other projects, and then we'll end with Excel automation. And lastly, we'll, we'll handle next steps. Where can you go from here? If you liked what you saw, how can you implement this stuff? And again, we'll save some time for questions. So SOLIDWORKS Electrical, it is a general schematics design tool. And all that means is we're connecting symbols with wires, with cables, and whether that's hydraulic, PNID, um, whatever symbol connections that need to be made, any schematic essentially, uh, we, can, we can do with this tool. Built into the tool, the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic Professional Tool, for example, has 2D layouts. And what that means is um, it, you can fully document your product with just SOLIDWORKS Electrical. If you have the electrical 3D add-in, that can collaborate with Mechanical, and you could do your layout in 3D and get your wire and cable lengths in 3D as well. SOLIDWORKS Electrical is built on a SQL backend, so it's very efficient uh, for collaboration. It's very efficient efficient for running reports, designer checks. We can query that information any way that we need to uh, to further our projects, further our outputs. And ultimately, having one version of the truth, having a parametric version of the truth, everything is linked. Um, that's going to help us reduce our documentation time with our libraries. It's going to help us uh, reduce or eliminate errors because of that one version of the truth. Um, and ultimately, this is a platform product, which means we need to collaborate. And we can have multiple electrical engineers working on a project. We can collaborate with the mechanical team simultaneously on a project, and we get that real-time feedback as we go. So that's an introduction to SOLIDWORKS Electrical. And why is it important to start with a parametric tool, something that has a good foundation, a good back end? Well, essentially, one change in a project sounds easy. I got to put my engineering hat on. I have to uh, select the right component, right rating. Uh, so it doesn't overheat so that things function correctly. Well, sounds easy enough, but that one part has a lot of information that needs to be documented throughout a project. So very easily, we could have one part that, that's going to occur in, in maybe seven different documents. It's going to have 40 different fields, um, and it's going to be touched by two or three different people. And so ultimately, you want that one version of the truth. You want this information to be parametric, because if it's not, well, even on this slide, we've, we have a typo here, um, and ultimately, that's what we're wrestling with. When it comes to auditing, would we even find a mistake like this? Um, just a simple fat finger, and that's what's going to happen if you're using Excel, if you're using a pneumatic schematic, and then a different electrical schematic, and then a different guy working on the assembly. All those versions of the truth is introduction to error. Um, it also means that I have my engineering hat on for maybe five, ten minutes, and then I put my, my data entry hat on for an hour, right? Ultimately, we want to leave our engineering hats on um, as long as possible in the process of, of designing so that we can increase our output for projects and products. So getting a little more into the details today, our automation techniques. We're going to start with templating and configurations. What is a macro? Let's, let's go ahead and, and define that and, and talk about a little bit of best practices there, and then we're, we'll wrap up with Excel automation. So templating and configurations. Well, what is a template and what are configurations? So SOLIDWORKS Electrical is a template-based software. What that means is if you have families of products, you can organize those families of products into to templates. Those families of products, they might have a 50% or 80% similarity base. So you got a new project comes on, you get it on the order on your desk, you read through the requirements, you say, oh yeah, that's product family A, you start new project, it's gonna give you product family A with all of its wire styles, all of its rules, all of its design rule checks, all of its reports ready to go. And even your bill of material content can be 50%, 80% there, whatever's common for that product family. And so you make your tweaks, you make your changes, and that project's done. That's what we mean by templating. And what are configurations? Well, configurations are rules for generated content. So instead of you creating a terminal strip drawing, you can create the rules and it'll generate that terminal strip from your schematic. You plop some terminal symbols on your schematic, you say draw a terminal strip, and it'll look at those rules and apply that for you. 
same thing can be true for things like PLC drawings for connector symbols, cross references. Um, those configurations are, are very helpful uh, for getting you content that's accurate and getting it to you very efficiently. I'm going to mention PLCs re real quick here as well because, you know, yes, I have all these inputs and outputs. Great. Well, that PLC configurator is going to handle more than the PLC symbol. It's going to also handle the circuit, the items that are attached to each channel, and we'll we'll see that here in a bit. So just a quick uh, video here. When we create a project template, it's just a matter of selecting that project, and that's that's that family. And that family, again, it can have documents, it can have PDFs, it can have schematics and build material items already there, and we can make our tweaks. When it comes to terminal strip drawings, sure, we can draw several terminals at a time. We can assign that to items that are reserved in the project. And then again, we can say, go ahead and make those bridges and create, generate those, those drawings, and it'll look at that project and generate what you have there. And this is a very flexible tool. We can, you know, in this case, I'll have bricks essentially for my terminals, but I can make these look more like a terminal. I can show cable connections, great summary of my terminal strip for my whole project. I don't have to flip between pages. PLC drawings here, um, it's a table view. We've got a table of our PLC. That PLC, it knows my inputs and outputs for that manufacturer part. I can assign a macro, which is a circuit, to each channel. So I can pick an indicator light, maybe I have an alarm circuit, a relay coil, whatever it is, I hit generate. And those configurations are gonna know, hey, if it's an input, let's draw the symbol on the right. If it's an output on the left, and you can set that up. Our wiring is automatic, our wire numbering. So every wire style, you can throw a formula in there, you hit a button and hit go, and it's gonna handle that for you. You can also do manual entries, you can reserve what you need to reserve. When I talk about a design rule check, auditing, in this case, oh, I forgot to wire uh, some of, or I forgot to number some of my wires. My report can take me there. I can fix the problem and then double check. Bill materials, outputs from to list, tag reports, whatever you need your output to be, as long as it's stored in your project at some point, somewhere, that can be an output that you define for your project. And those outputs can be customly organized. Hey, let's break these out by manufacturer make it easy for purchasing. Let's break this out in some total or lengths. We can do that too. So very configurable, very helpful tool for automating your schematic creation. Now we briefly touched on macros, but let's look a little more in detail here because this is gonna help us build toward Excel automation. So we had a macro, we had a circuit that we assigned to a PLC channel. Well, ultimately, what is a macro? Well, a macro is just a collection of information that you can library at any level. And once you library that, it's available for anyone on the network in any location. And it's, it's as simple as a drag and drop. I box select, I drag it in, I give it a name. Now it's, it's a library item for anybody to use. And once I've used that, I can, I can adjust the bill of materials behind those symbols. So yeah, I have a 50 horsepower motor, let's change it to a 40 and things like that. So ultimately, we're gonna see just that. Drag and drop, I pull a circuit from my library. It's going to number it according to my project that I'm in. I can also insert several schematics. Think of modular designing. I've completed schematics, in this case, another PLC, and I can pull that in already done, ready in one go. So that is macros. And, and, and I want you to understand that because that's gonna help us with Excel automation. So first of all, what is Excel automation? Well, Excel automation is included in SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic Professional. And that is the most common uh, volume of solution that we provide for electrical. And essentially, Excel drives your schematic creation. I fill out a form, and that form is going to drive the logic to place those macros, turn them on, turn them off in schematics, and even replace the bill of material items behind them. So essentially, um, as long as you're basically taking your inputs as an engineer, you take those inputs and you decide what that means for your outputs, your schematics. Well, you can have Excel handle the same work. So if you if you have inputs and you can logically decide based on those inputs what your outputs need to be, we can work that into Excel. We can take that 40 hour project down to 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we, can, we can take that project that normally has 
errors and auditing. And if our Excel form is correct and accurate, we can reduce and eliminate those errors. So let's take a look at this. And I'm gonna actually take this, this one live. So Excel automation, I've got a project here. And this project, I've, I've got, there's no schematics here. And the idea is I get a purchase order, and this is a simple, uh, simple form that I've created. I get a purchase order for my project. I pick a product family. Okay, this product family, it's for um, maybe a water jet cutter. And that's gonna take, we're gonna do a three motor system. And I know that, oh, this needs to be a high speed motor system. I can do a horsepower, frame size. Do I wanna have a cable drawing? I fill out this form and this is custom to you. Uh, maybe you, your form is based on amperage. Most of the time it's based on horsepower. Uh, maybe it's quantity of motors, maybe it's selection of PLC vendor, PLC vendor, things like that. And I can save this document. And then when I go to um, into my project, I can take my project and point it to that, that Excel sheet. And then SolidWorks Electrical will then read that Excel sheet and produce all those macros where they need to be based on my inputs. So I said I needed a three motor system. Okay, so it's gonna draw me three motor lines. Well, those three motor lines are gonna need, in this case, three VFDs. So I've got some VFD schematics. I'm gonna need a comms page and that's gonna have variations depending on how many motors I have and so on. Um, but you'll notice, okay, well, I'm missing my off sheet connections. Well, I can also use Excel automation to drive what wires are connected where. And then I can use, so I can say, hey, this is wire one and go ahead and connect that to wire one. And it will do that automatically. So now I've connected up my whole project. This project's done. I run my design rule check. I can go to over to 3D and route some wires and I can run my reports. And again, 40 hours to 10 minutes. So if this is a configurator, let's do another project. So let's go ahead, I'll just, I just deleted 40 hours of work. I can go back into Excel and this time let's do a one motor system. And again, I can change my frame size or my horsepower or whatever needs to be my inputs that I take as an engineer and save that, go back to my project and we'll just point it to the same sheet again and we'll see the, the, the differences here. So I said, this is a one motor system. So I'm gonna get one motor line and I only need one VFD. And my power and comms, I don't need all of that variation. And again, um, I've gone in here and I've said, I've used Excel to say, hey, this wire is gonna be wire one, go ahead and connect it to wire one. I could renumber after that, um, but I can use Excel to drive the bill materials behind my symbols, the wire marks for connecting, even the component marks if I wanted to. And we'll go ahead and run that again without me selecting the wire so that everything gets connected. I do a design rule check. I go over to 3D and route these, route the wires. I run a report, again, another project under the belt. Not, it's not no longer a whole week. I don't have to audit this again and again. I have good information in my library. I'm getting good information on the outputs here. And that is Excel automation in a nutshell. Now, a bit of a disclaimer here, I've shown this from the perspective of a whole project, but really Excel automation can be used to automate any repetitive task that you are performing in a project. So we have clients that are using it for notes. Hey, I finished my project. Every page is a unique style of page. I'm gonna go ahead and tell Excel this page is this style, go ahead and put those notes on and so on, and it'll populate those notes for you. Uh, we've, we have clients that use it um, for, for everything but their PLCs, for their whole projects. It's, it's again, any automated task, any task where you take inputs and you need to produce a logical output, um, then we can have Excel do that for us. Okay, great, maybe this applies to you. Uh, maybe you have repetitive tasks, maybe you have product families that those tasks can be run against. What are our next steps? Well, there's a huge community around SolidWorks Electrical. Uh, we, you can get in touch with us, our sales reps, um, us, our, the electrical specialists. We'd be happy to tell, talk to you more in detail here. We also have an Excel automation class. 
I do want to define what that is. At Excel Automation Class, it's giving you a couple sample projects. This is one of them, depending on your version of software that you have. Uh, it's telling you, okay, we, we know how to create these macros. What are some best practices for naming conventions and, and insertion points? What are some techniques we can use in Excel? So I'll bring up my Excel form here. How does this work? Well, my input that I, that I have here is driving the macro that gets inserted. So in this case, if it's a three motor system, I need to insert this macro three times and offset its position. That's all being dri driven just by these inputs. So if I say one motor system, well, this one's going to be turned off and this one's going to be turned off. So you're basically defining the complete scope of your project and then you're passing in variables. What do you want to draw where? What uh, bill material items need to go on there? And it's just simple logic. And so that's the techniques that we cover um, in that class. And then after that, this is for your company. So we'll actually dive into one of your completed projects. And we'll start implementing a few of these techniques, get you started um, so that, that you can take this and run with it from there. So that's really what we needed to cover in today's, uh, in today's webcast. Templating configurations, Solder Selectrical can do a lot for you on the front end. It, it can organize your rules, it can standardize what your schematics look like, great for librarying, things like that, design rule checks, reporting. Macros are a great use of, of chunks of information. Hey, I've got a motor line in every project. Well, instead of me dragging in a symbol, dragging in wires, assigning cores, assigning terminals, and organizing all that, that can all be one chunk, and I can just drag that in every time. And then Excel automation, going a step further. I get an order from sales. Sales is filling in some blanks for me. Those blanks are good enough to produce an output. And let's all I got to do is pick the product family, fill out the form, and it's going to go ahead and finish that project for me. I do a little bit of cleanup and that project's good to go. Ultimately, yeah, we're here to help. We're here to get you where you need to go. 